Well, super poor. We came from Mexico. Fucking, my dad worked in construction. Saved a bunch of money. Had like three, four jobs at once. Bought a restaurant. It was a meat market in Paramount, California. Popped off. We were finally making the big bucks. Okay? Did you work at the meat market? When I was a kid, yeah. Damn, that's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would uh, clean the tables and stuff, uh-huh. and people would buy food, and they would, they would be like a little cup, and I'd be like, if, tip, senor, por favor, tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I swear, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it was popping off, and I think, you know, with the success of that, uh, you know, my dad just started doing some drugs, some extracurricular activities with the boys. Some other workers from the store, because they were all living, dude. You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we used to throw these fucking crazy New Year parties, dude. I'm telling you, like, the biggest party you've seen in L.A., my parents would throw that with just, like, 300 crazy-ass Mexican people. (laughs) Just fucking doing drugs, mariachi till 3 a.m., all the fucking white people in the neighborhood, like, keep it down! (laughs) And they're like, no, we're not! It was crazy. It was nuts. Um... But yeah, I think, you know, I got to the point where my dad started doing some, yeah, way more extracurricular. Not the fun, not the fun drugs yeah. anymore. And then uh, he left us for a few years. Uh, he moved to San Francisco, where I think he moved because his sister moved, lived over there and so did my brother. My brother kind of took care of him. My brother Marco, my older brother, was able to kind of like um, really uh, kind of look after him. Because I think my dad was kind of struggling. He was like my hero growing up, so... Growing up, I gave, I gave him gave him a lot of excuses. I was like, "Yeah, you know, but did you? Probably, but you he just he worked so hard. You should, mom. Like he's he did, he's giving up. He's taking a rest yeah, over like there. He, you know, I loved him. I don't think he, even like growing up, I kind of like lied that he was doing any drugs. I remember my friend Manny one time came over, and he would do all this stuff in the garage. You know, he would kind of disappear in there, and I'd always assume he was like fucking building something in there. And you would hear shit building, but I think, I swear to God, I think he would just fucking make, grab the drill and go, <laughs> I swear to God. He's looking back on it, what the hell was he building in there, dude? <laughs> really? <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. He's like sawing random pieces of wood in there. You walk, you walk in there, it's just a bunch of pieces just cut every which way. What the hell? <laughs> What's he doing? Yeah. And how did you start to figure out that it might have not been what you expected? Uh, I think I remember him. I remember one time my friend Manny who's just a little bit more ahead of me in that like kind of department of like drug culture and stuff like that. He was like, holy shit, dude, you're dead. There's drugs. Look at this pipe. And I looked at him. I was like, that's a fucking work pipe. You fucking idiot. You know, shit. And we're just putting it away. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Maddie was a little quick one. He's my best friend. Damn. He was just like, no, dude, that's a drug pipe, bro. <laughs> I think I saw that on Pulp Fiction. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so but I called him an idiot. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. My dad would just, like, he was just up late. And he would always be like, I'm working. So I was kind of like, you know, he was my hero. So I would be like, Mom, he's working in there. Look, you can hear the drill right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I swear, dude. dude. So you saw, I mean, damn, that's pretty crazy because you said you guys were pretty successful with the restaurant. And yeah. then, and then it just went down. And then it kind of just went downhill. Yeah, because wow, that's because you know he, I feel like my mom wasn't good with her money, so we didn't have an account. So she was just fucking. I mean, I don't know how much we were making, but I want to say it was like, bro, it was like twenty k profit a month or something for a while, like or more. It was, we were wow. making a lot of money. Damn. And my mom was just like, we had a fucking boat. My mom had two cars. My dad had two cars. My brother Marco, who was 18, 17 years old, he had two cars. He had a Mustang and a Thunderbird. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, they were all rich. Dude. Like, I feel bad for my little brothers. They're like, they're still living in that poor area, you know? Like, wow. They, they grew up in that poor phase. I was like, I kind of, you know, I want. I had every toy I wanted. But Marco and Alan, they had like, Alan got to go to trips. Fucking Mark, like New York when he wanted to, when he was like 16 or some <laughs> shit. Marco had cars. So that was kind of nice. Right, so now, like, fast forward to today, how how are things going with you and your dad? I mean, it was good. I think, you know, I mean, we never really talked about it. I think, you know, like, I think when I found out officially my mom and my parents were, like, trying to divorce, she brought me over one day when I was trying to, like, defend him for not sending any over, like, child support or anything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you fucking worked so hard, mom, for years getting that store. If you didn't send child support for one month, whoop-dee-doo. And she was like, come here. 
And I was like, what? And then she showed me a piece of paper. And it was like divorce papers. And it was like, and I remember looking at her and she was like, <laughs> damn. And I was like, well, this has just ruined my week. You just ruined my hero, mom. I'm just kidding. But uh, so I was like, oh, fuck. But well, I think those kind of things make us who we are. And, you know, I, I think we've talked about this before, but like, I think you can tell pretty instantly right when you meet you that you're like a pretty special person, but it wasn't until like six months into me knowing you where it like, I really was like, holy shit, you really are. And it was that much. Just an all right guy. No, it was like, you know, you know, like there's good people and then there's like, okay, there's special people. And we were at, um, Chipotle. Remember that? And I paid for you. And then you're like, holy shit, this guy's nice. No, dude. This guy really is rich. <laughs> no, we were at Chipotle with your brother and a former teacher of yours walked up to you. Oh, yeah. What'd she say? She's like, you're so sexy now, David. No, she went, she came up to me. You can tell a story.